Shall we jump in? Yes. Yes. <laughs> so, so talk a little bit about, like, there is, it's an eight-episode season, and I'm curious, from when you guys first started coming up with the show to what people are seeing on screen, was there dramatic changes along the way, or was it sort of like, this is what we set out to do, you know, knowing Sigourney's character, knowing these things, or how much was it figuring it out in the writer, you know what I mean? Uh... No, to be honest, no. Sure. The, the, I'm just curious if this story, if you had the idea for the story and it was going to be like this, but you ended up doing something like this. Like, how, do you yeah, want to... Yeah, no, absolutely. The, the, what, the only thing that hadn't kind of bubbled up, the only thing we hadn't, the writer's room hadn't seen yet necessarily was was, uh, was Iron Fist, because we had, we'd, I think, seen early cuts of Luke Cage. I'm forgetting exactly where in the, in the timeline all of this was. But uh, we, the story that we that, that, that I took to Netflix and Marvel and said this is a story I think I want to tell this is a defender story um, that that's ultimately what we ended up shooting and uh, they were Netflix was really kind of creatively you know wonderful to work with because they're kind of just like go tell the story you want to tell other people were asking about you know did they have demands did they, you know because they have their algorithms I'm sure and all that but really they were just like just creatively tell the story you want to tell so uh, yeah we some stuff changed along the way. The, the two things I think that changed the most probably were the fact that because Iron Fist and because Danny Rand and Colleen hadn't been cast yet, I started writing the first draft of the first couple of scripts before I ever saw Jessica or uh, in Spaces. So it was like, it's, it's to crazy. So, but, but we always kind of kept them as this like, you know, tentatively once we cast it then we'll go in and sharpen it and make it really sure. specific for them. And so once Marvel, it was a great day, once Marvel came up and said, you know, meet Colleen Wing. The writers all leaned forward, like, A, because she's incredible, but also because it felt like, cool, now we know who we're writing for, now we know, you know what the cadence of the voice is going to sound like, now we know what she looks like, and that was kind of you know, the final piece that clicked in place. How did you kind of balance figuring out how much to, you know, kind of explain to people who maybe hadn't seen all the other shows, and then how much to just kind of let people, like, assuming that they were all huge fans and diving in? It was a tightrope to walk. We knew, uh, I think, Marvel, Netflix, myself, everyone, the writers all knew, there were going to be people who have seen every episode, the people who were just going to come see The Defenders. We wanted to make that a really enjoyable viewing experience for both. So, or also, in the other breakdowns, so people who have only seen Daredevil, people who have only seen Jessica were coming to this. We're coming to the show just for Jessica, you know? So, so we knew there was a, a line to walk between not over-explaining their abilities, their characters, their pasts, but also not under-explaining, if that makes any sense. Um, so you wouldn't be lost. You'd be like, wait, why, why can nobody shoot Luke Cage? I don't understand. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so it was, this, it was this fine line to walk, and hopefully, especially in the first couple episodes, it's oriented in a way, as opposed to disoriented. Well, in that same vein, there's no real flashbacks. You don't have to explain their powers necessarily. You know? So I was wondering, you know, in that sort of same vein, like, you sort of apply a lot of things, but mm -hmm. you know, a show like this would make... Understand why some people flashback heavy, or you go really exposition heavy. Yeah, I, I, I think the, my instinct was always to stay away from that because it felt like some people have put 13 or 26 hours of their lives into investing in these characters. I don't need to show them a flashback of how Daredevil became, you know, Daredevil. I, I just just feels like well, our, our audience is so perceptive, it's so smart, it leans in, it doesn't go. Our, our audience is not going to go do laundry while the shows are airing. You know, it's, it's turn the lights down, put the kids to bed. It's it's Iron Fist time. It's Luke time. You know, so. So we knew we could do with two lines of dialogue what maybe on other stories you might have to show the flashback. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. There's a viral campaign going on for Miss um, Tony and Miss Reed to team up. You guys kind of give a little uh, Easter egg for that regarding them teaming up and possibly bringing them to <laughs> Easter egg? Oh, oh gosh, I'm going to get in so much trouble. I don't know what to say. That means you're yeah. <laughs> Well, well, I think what we can say is that, I mean, this show is just beyond these guys. Like we were saying before, it's, it's like... It's Almost every character meets at some point. That's fair, right? Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> I think it's very safe to assume. It's very safe to assume there are certain... Uh, I mean, just the, the joy of the Defenders is, oh my god, they're all in the same world, these four worlds are connected, they're all going to interact. Like, the, the joy, is, at least for the writers, and also I think for the actors, some of them are just like, couldn't wait. I remember Kristen specifically couldn't wait to work with Charlie, and Charlie couldn't wait to work with Kristen, because they'd been watching each other's shows, tracking each other's shows, knowing the Defenders is coming, but not really, you know, not, never having a scene, never crossing. And so they were so excited to finally be in scenes together. Um, so I think some of it is just, you know, giving, a, giving fans a lot of what they've been waiting for. Uh, Iron Fist worked really hard to make sure that Colleen was more than just a love interest. She was her own person. She kicked so much butt. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, how does the show elevate, continue to elevate her character? Do you want me to? 
Do you want to? Go for it. I would love to know what you think. The, uh, <laughs> a for the for the you know for the for the for the title characters. It, 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 I think it was always really important that th this felt like Luke Cage season 1.5, Jessica Jones season 1.5. It's something a story that, that comes before the second season of those shows. Um, but, but that also weirdly to us, were in a wonderful way, trickled. It, 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 it was like everyone felt like this needs to be the Foggy and Defenders isn't the Foggy from Daredevil season one. You know, he's grown. He's come a long way. So the Colleen, again, to go back to the weird, you know, maps of Homeland, a lot timelines on the board. <laughs> We knew we were writing Colleen after the events of Iron Fist. So it's, it was really hard to write episode one of Defenders, which we knew would come after episode 13 of Iron Fist, without reading episode 13 of Iron Fist. Mm -hmm. But Scott, eventually, you know, we, once there was a take and we, and we heard what Scott Buck was doing and we knew what Jack Wood wanted, we got to know, okay, we're picking Colleen up here, so let's give her some story, let's give her this arc and this journey. So hopefully, uh, every, every character has a satisfying arc and comes out of the Defenders change in one way or the other. Like some of those changes are really big, some of those changes are a little more minuscule, mm -hmm. but they're all really personal changes. I feel like it's kind of inevitable that people are going to compare it to the Avengers in some way because it's just the idea of all the separate heroes coming together. So, is this something you guys worried about or at all? Or, like, is, is there any kind of common thread that you think there is, or just morally separate? The only point is that the only similarity is multiple heroes. I think, in terms of how I explain it to my parents, <laughs> that, that really helps. But the truth is that the the, the world of the Avengers, I mean, those take place in two hour bursts and they're uh, beautiful, big, spectacle filled movies. And just in TV, by, by the very nature of the way we make TV, they're, 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 they're smaller, more personal stories. So, in a way, I like to say, and this is our, our, my mantra in the room, was that if the Avengers were the Beatles, we were making, we were doing the Ramones. Because this felt like street level, dirty New York. We're not leaving New York, we're never going to space. You know, we're, we're just, Luke Cage in space. Was not something that is so really interesting me for defenders right now, um, but uh, but yeah, I hope that somehow. I'd watch Luke Cage in space. Tweeting, <laughs> tweeting. Speaking of regarding the um, you know the the hanging all together two hours, you have only eight episodes compared to the thirteen for everyone else. How difficult was it to condense four heroes into eight episodes when they all each had thirteen? It was difficult, but ultimately, I think the stories on their own shows were. Uh, were very personal, very especially in the first season of the shows, you really need to get into Luke's head, you need to get into JJ's head, and you need to understand their worlds. Um, you need to get into Danny's world and understand it's not a reason for um, I don't, I don't know. I mean, we, all I can say is we crafted the stories in the room. We knew we could do. We, we liked eight, eight. We could. We kind of came up with eight, eight episodes worth of story. Took it to Netflix, and they said eight sounds good, and that was it. We knew there was a production kind of timeline where we would want to be able to send Kristen back and just start shooting Jessica Jones. I think she had like a week off before uh, between season between Dirt of uh, Defenders and uh, Jessica Jones season two. But uh, yeah, it was really organic. After you first wrote it, uh, you know, the, then Iron Fist comes out, then Luke Cage comes out. Like, how did that change over time from, you know, based on the reception of, of those shows or based on the I mean, we really, in terms of reception, like, we, we were shooting the finale when Iron Fist launched. Like, that's how tight all this stuff was. Yeah. So, it really didn't, it didn't really matter. One of the things I think that, uh, this is not a spoiler, but one of the things I think is very cool about the, sh the first four episodes is that you guys use color. Like, there's a lot of yellow with Luke Cage, there's a lot of red with Matt Murdock. How conscious was everyone about using these primary colors, which are known for these characters, mm -hmm. in, in the episodes? It was really deliberate. Uh, it, was, it was largely thanks to the great execution by Lloyd, the DP, and S.J. Clarkson, who directed the first two episodes of, of this, who also directed the J.J. pilot. But we, we knew going in, we, we wanted to form to mirror content in a way, and so we knew going in we were going to let these characters kind of all set them up and then slowly start crossing the streams and slowly start braiding it. I never wanted there to be, you know, in the first 10 minutes, like they're, they're all sitting in a situation room like, this is what's happening. It felt like we need to get there also individual, they needed to get there on their own, they needed to get to the story on their own. And so it felt like SJ had this great idea to make the, their visual worlds separate so that when they started crossing paths, for example, like the first time you see Matt Murdock walking in the trailers, I'm talking about it. First time, yeah, when Matt and JJ cross paths, the door behind him is red, so that there's a burst of red in the very blue violet world that John has been set up with. And the same goes for, you know, in the world of Luke being very yellow and golden hues with the, uh, the very green world of uh, Iron Fist and Colleen. Were you aware of that on set, that they were going yeah. with these colors? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm a big fan of SJ, who directed the first two episodes. And, um, yeah, 
And so we sat down pretty early and she talked to me about Colleen and um, what she had brought to the table in terms of developing the character. And one of the big things she said was, oh, your whole costume's going to change. <laughs> that and strangely enough that I couldn't wear my hair down anymore. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Can I talk about that? I don't know. I, I don't think they're going to care what happens with the hair. <laughs> Netflix will let that one go. So let that one go. Well, there was this question of like, oh, Electra has her hair down, so you can't have her hair down. So if, you, if you've seen the first four episodes, you know that my hair is always up. Um, pretty much always. I, didn't, I did not put it together. And I'm suddenly wearing green. Green and grey. Um, <laughs> it's nice. It's nice to continually... Con continually let the character evolve um, and uh, I think like what Mark said Colleen and Defenders is not Colleen and Iron Fist and she's gone through so much you can't stay the same after that and she's still really reeling from everything that's happened so um, but yeah sorry back to your question yes I was aware <laughs> they were doing the colour coordination thing thank you thank you nice to see you